What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of The Writer's Room, part of the Fun With Friends podcast. I'm your host, Arden Coots, and today I will be talking about my experience with writing Fall Into Midnight. Fall Into Midnight is a romantic suspense, a queer romantic suspense novel that will be coming out later this year. And it has been one of the easiest books for me to write. Um, I started writing it as a project for the 2021 NaNoWriMo, I think. Um, Maybe 2022. Um, But I had all the characters already kind of like figured out. I knew the plot, um, didn't do an outline or anything like that. It was kind of just a story that I had in my head and I sat down and started writing it and managed to get a rough draft done in the month of November, which if people aren't familiar with NaNoWriMo, it is National Novel Writing Month, and you the goal is to write a novel in a month, in the month of November. And so I think I got pretty close to finishing it, if not finishing it, during NaNoWriMo one year, and then kind of like sat it down for a while, picked it back up, And it took me a couple months to get the draft finished, but it really was one of the easier projects I've worked on. Um, And I think it was because I'd kind of been telling myself this story in my head for a while. So it was easy to just sit down and put it on paper. Um, So it went fast. Um, you know, I had some hiccups, I had to fill in some spaces and come up with an ending because I didn't have an ending for it yet and had to change some characters around and do a little bit of, um, updating, I guess, to some characters that I had in my mind, but the writing process was a new one for me. It wasn't a struggle, like... It usually is. Um, So that was nice. And um, I knew with Fall Into Midnight that I wanted to publish it. And so when I finished it the first time around, I did actually self-publish it on Amazon. And did book signings and kind of marketed it and put it out there for the world. But then I realized that it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. So I actually pulled it off of Amazon and Kindle Unlimited and started to put it through the actual publishing process or like put it through editing, which I hadn't done before. Um, The first go around, I edited it myself and then... And I, I mean, I went through like several rounds of editing on my own. I thought it was in a good spot, but there were a lot of uh, mistakes and plot holes and things. Um, so I wanted it to be better. So I pulled it and decided to get a real editor and professional beta readers and line editors and everything and, and really try to like do it quote unquote right um, to see if it could be something bigger and better. So I found my editor, Montrez, who is amazing, um, and found a book coach, Monique, who is also amazing, and started the process over. I sent Fall into Midnight off to developmental edits, which were insanely useful. I got those back just a little while ago and started making changes. 
based on those edits, which I do think have made the book stronger and better than what it was before. Um, definitely have allowed for the characters to grow more throughout the book, which I think is a good thing. Um, so I put it through developmental edits and am working on the, the second uh, round of manuscript assessments for Fall Into Midnight. And I'll be getting those back this week that this episode comes out, so I'm excited for that. And in the meantime, I've been working with my book coach to learn more about self-publishing and marketing and building street teams and finding ARC reviewers and building a platform around, you know, your ideal reader and, um, She's also helping me with the cover art and formatting and all of those little things that can be kind of like cumbersome. Um, she's helping manage that for Fall Into Midnight, which is great. Um, so I have her help as well, which has been wonderful. And... We have the cover, which is super dope. Um, super excited about it. I think it's, I don't know, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm very excited for it. Um, and we're very close, very close to fall into midnight, um, for fall into midnight to be ready. So that'll be coming out later this year. Um, I guess to share a little bit more about the actual book and what it's about, um, it follows uh, two main characters, Gray and Hannah. Gray is a gender fluid, um, she, they, non-binary um, individual, and Hannah is lesbian um, and ER doctor and um, Gray is a bouncer at a local club and they meet at this club and it's very apparent to Gray that Hannah has security with her and so Gray is wondering why this individual in the club has security and so she's curious and she's also um, intrigued by Hannah. So they meet at the club and then Hannah and Gray kind of try to start a relationship and Gray finds out that Hannah has someone trying to kill her. And what they don't realize is that the enemy is closer to them than they think. So the uh, thrilling uh, drama it ensues and there are some other characters Marcus who is Gray's best friend he is a fan favorite he's the comedic relief um, you have Key and James who are Hannah's bodyguards and they are polar opposites Key is very funny and caring and light and James is the opposite in every way and you have uh, Kiara, who is Gray's ex. And you have Dimitri, who is the club owner. And you have a few other folks that um, come into play in the book. But they um, have to kind of figure out who's trying to, to kill Hannah and survive Midnight. So, um, yeah, I'm super excited for it to come out. Um, I did write a novella that is the prequel to Fall Into the Night, and it's called Before We Fall, and it's more about Gray and Hannah's lives leading up to the events of Fall Into the Night, so it's a good um, precursor to the first book because you get to learn more about them and, and find out who they are and... and um, 
what they do and how they've ended up where they are when fall in the fall into midnight kicks off. Um, and you can actually download that now. It's available on my website, ardencoots.com. Um, and it's free. So it's a nice little quick read to get you ready for fall into midnight. Highly recommend. And yeah, I don't know. I, I guess overall, my, my, if we want to talk about like my process for this book, very chill, <laughs> very natural. Um, like I said, there, I didn't have an outline. I didn't have, um, notes or anything really. I just started writing. Usually I'll, I'll try to like, you know, sketch something out or put, put an outline together of some sort, um, for the book, but this one just kind of came, kind of flowed, um, and I let the characters take me where they wanted, um, which was super cool. But, um, I don't know. It was, uh, it was really nice. And the same happened for the second book, which I started, um, during last year's NaNoWriMo, I started, um, the sequel, which is Fallen to Me, and it was kind of the same thing. It took me two months to write, um, which was amazing. Again, never had that experience before, it, just being able to like pump out an entire book in a month or two. It was fantastic. Um, but I'm excited to see how Fall Into Midnight does and how it um, performs once the marketing gets going and, and it's actually released. So I might do a follow-up episode of the podcast talking about the results and maybe what I would do differently um, or what I will do differently for the next book. Um, and kind of what my experience has been with Kindle and then Ingram Sparks and like other publishing, self-publishing platforms, because I am going to use several different ones this time around. Um, several I haven't used, so I'll talk a little bit about that. But um, yeah, that's... Well, let me talk, I was going to say that's all, but you know what, let me, let me dig into it a little bit more. Um, finding, I want to get into like finding a cover artist or an artist to do my cover art. Um, that was fun. It was really hard because there are so many good illustrators out there, artists out there. It was really hard to pick one person. But we used a site called 99designs, which I'd never heard of before. And it's super cool. So I'd recommend checking that out if you're looking for um, artists. But it was, um, you open up like competitions and people submit their work. Like you put like a description of what you need and people submit their first work. And then you select someone based on that and then fine tune the work that they submitted. Um... And so that was cool. It did take uh, several weeks. I think overall it probably took about a month to get everything sorted. Um, but they like working with the people was super easy. Um, and Monique handled most of that for me. But like they would submit a draft and then we would go through it and say what we liked what we didn't like and what we wanted changed and then they'd change it and submit a second draft or a third and then um eventually we ended up with a like a soft final cover um which is great um we're just waiting to get my blurb done for the back of the book which is honestly like the hardest part i think of <laughs> writing a book is the back blurb um at least for me, I don't know. I'd love to hear from other writers, like how they put their blurbs together because <laughs> it's hard, um, hard to do for sure. 
but um yeah the artwork was great and it was really hard because there were so many amazing artists and a lot of folks that i wanted to like keep um their information for like future projects or like to do like special artwork for different releases and things so it was fun it was really fun um and the editing process which i talked about has been surprisingly it's been easier than i thought it would be um especially because with uh, my other book echoes of us i did developmental edits on that and it's been really difficult kind of getting into the edits and making changes and rewrites and it's overwhelming but for Fall into Midnight, again, it just seems to flow easier. So as soon as I got those edits, I was able to jump in and start making changes and all the edits like made sense. And um, Montrez is an amazing editor and um, very kind in the way that she makes suggestions, which is great. And um, also it was fun just seeing her responses and reactions to things going on in the book so um very much appreciate having her um as an editor um but yeah it's gone a lot smoother than echoes of us uh which has been great it's been a wonderful experience um i'm lucky i feel like to have that as an experience as my experience um Let's see, what else? I've built a website, ardencoots.com, as part of this whole process, which was fine. It was a little challenging, but um, I think it came out pretty well. I think it's going to get more challenging when I start adding books for purchase <laughs> and pre-sale and all that. Um, I think that'll be difficult to do, but... Um, I'll figure it out. <laughs> so it'll be fine. And yeah, there's just like a lot of little things to think about when it comes to writing a book that you don't really think about when you're actually writing it. Um, it's everything that comes afterwards, the marketing, the building the community, the, you know, the Facebook, the Instagram, the website, all of that starts to add up kind of quickly. Um, and things that you have to maintain, you know, newsletters, building your mailing list, freebies, opt-ins, all that um, becomes a lot. But um, so far it's been a positive experience and I'm looking forward to doing it again with the next book um, after I finish this round. But... Um, They've decided to mow the lawn outside. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can. So I think I'm gonna cut this, cut this out, cut this short, I guess, um, and in the episode. But um, if you haven't already downloaded Before We Fall, visit ardencoots.com and grab your free copy. And stay tuned for, um, the book coming out later this year and in two weeks I have Kay Sterling on um, she's the writer of the Nannies of New York uh, series highly recommend so we'll be talking about overcoming yourself and your anxieties in writing that's a really great episode um, and I think that's all for this episode of The Writer's Room. So um, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like, rate, and review the podcast. And with that, get out there, try something new, and have some fun. Bye!